Hello Grade 12s, welcome to our lesson on calculations for projectile motion. In this lesson we will work through a number of questions. Siwe will help us with question 1. A ball is thrown upwards with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second. Question 1. Determine the maximum height reached above the thrower's hand. It is still a good idea to draw a simple sketch before you start to answer the question. Write all the information you know onto the sketch. The initial velocity of the ball is 10 meters per second up. The final velocity of the ball at the top of its motion is 0 meters per second. The acceleration due to gravity is 9,8 meters per second squared. The first question asks us to determine the maximum height, which is the delta y value. We must choose a direction as positive. For this example, we will make up the positive direction. So now we change acceleration to negative 9,8 because acceleration due to gravity always acts down. To help us decide which equation to use, we are going to list the information we have in our diagram. Always write your list in the same order. This will make the problem easier too. This is what we know. Change in time and change in displacement are unknowns. Using this information, which equation should we use? Well, we can't use any of the equations with time because we don't know the time taken. That's right. So what other options do we have? Hmm. It must be something to do with velocity. Yes. The correct one is final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times delta y. Now we substitute in what we know. So we have 0 squared is equal to 10 squared plus 2 times negative 9,8 times delta y. See, 0 is equal to 100 minus 19,6 times delta y. Take the minus 19,6 times delta y over to the left so that it becomes a positive. Now we have 19,6 delta y equal to 100. Divide both sides by 19,6 to get delta y on its own. The displacement is 5,10 meters above the thrower's hand. We always round off to two decimal places. Ready for the second question of this example? Determine the time it takes the ball to reach its maximum height. Here's the list we wrote earlier. Add in what we have just calculated. The maximum height was 5,10 meters. Here's a handy tip. Write this information in a different way and try not to use a value that you have calculated. Look at our list again. Which equation should we use? What about final velocity equals to initial velocity plus acceleration? Of course, we use final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times change in time. Can you find the answer? We'll go through it together. First, we substitute in the value we know. So 0 is equal to 10 plus negative 9,8 times delta t. 9,8 delta t is then equal to 10. Divide both sides by 9,8 to get delta t on its own. Therefore, the time taken for the ball to reach its maximum height is 1,02 seconds. Thanks, Siwe. Our next question is about a ball thrown upward from the top of a cliff. The ball is thrown upward at 30 meters per second. First, we calculate the maximum height the ball reaches above the hand. Choose a useful interval of motion. We choose the interval from when the ball leaves the hand to the top of its motion. We are told that the initial velocity for this interval is 30 meters per second upward. We choose the upward direction as positive. We know that the projectile stops for an instant at its highest point. So the final velocity for this interval is 0 meters per second. The ball is in free fall for the entire interval. 
so the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared downward. The downward direction is shown by the negative sign. We are asked to find the maximum height reached above the point the ball leaves the hand. In other words, we need the ball's vertical displacement for this interval. We use this equation because the only unknown it contains is what we are asked to calculate, displacement. We substitute values into the equation. 0 squared is 0. 30 squared is 900. 2 times minus 9,8 times displacement equals minus 19,6 times displacement. Make sure you remember the negative signs. We need to make the displacement the subject of the formula. This is how we do this. This is the answer we get on our calculator. We round this off to two decimal places. This gives us 45,92. We calculate displacements, so the unit is meters. The answer is positive, which means up. In other words, above the point the ball leaves the hand. So the maximum height this ball reaches is 45,92 meters above the point it leaves the thrower's hand. You might think that the questions all look similar. But each one has something different that we need to be careful about. Next, we ask to calculate the ball's position four seconds after it leaves the hand. We don't know whether the ball is still moving up or if it has started to move down by this time. So we're not sure how to draw our diagram. But let's start with this. And remember, we may need to change it as we find out more. Now we add in the information we know about this interval. Remember, this is not the same interval as for the previous question. The interval lasts four seconds. We must find the ball's displacement during this time. The initial velocity is positive 30 meters per second. The ball's acceleration is negative 9,8 meters per second squared. Again, this equation contains the unknown that we are asked to calculate, displacement. We substitute values into the equation. 30 times 4 is 120. Half times minus 9,8 times 4 squared equals minus 78,4. Again, make sure you remember the negative signs. We subtract 78,4 from 120, and the answer is 41,6. Since we need to calculate the position, the unit is meters, the answer is positive, and that is upward. The starting point for this interval is where the ball leaves the hand. So the answer is 41,6 meters above the point the ball leaves the hand. How do we know if the picture we drew is right? In this question, we see the ball rises 41,6 meters. This is a bit less than the maximum height we calculated in the previous question. That fits with how we drew our picture now, except that there is another way to draw this too. Both these pictures fit our answers. So far we don't know if in four seconds the ball moved only upward or moves upward and a little downwards. For both of these, the ball's displacement is 41,6 meters above the hand. Our next calculation will show us which of the pictures is correct. We are asked to calculate the ball's velocity at the same point. In other words, four seconds after it leaves the hand. We don't know which of these pictures is correct, so we add all the information we know about this interval into both of them. This is the same information we had in our previous question we are asked the ball's velocity at the end of this interval. We use this equation. We substitute values into the equation and calculate, being careful to use the correct signs. The answer is minus 9,2. Since we are calculating velocity, the unit is meters per second, and the minus means downward. So this tells us that the ball is already dropping by this time. So this is the correct drawing. Now we are asked to calculate the ball's position 6,5 seconds after it leaves the hand.
Again, we are not sure how to draw our picture. We don't know where the ball is after 6,5 seconds. We do know it must be moving downward. But we don't know where exactly to draw it at the end of the interval. But that doesn't matter, as long as we realize we may need to change our picture later. We write in our given information. We know the initial velocity, acceleration, and time duration for this interval. We are asked to find the ball's position at the end of this interval. We can answer this by finding the displacement the ball undergoes during this interval. We use this equation. We substitute values and calculate. The answer is minus 12,025. We round this off to minus 12,03. The unit for displacement is meters. The minus means the distance downward. In other words, after 6,5 seconds, the ball's position is 12,03 meters below the point where it leaves the hand. So that shows us that our picture was wrong. Let's correct it. This is a better picture of the 6,5 second interval. The next question has a very important difference to the previous question. Can you see it? Here we are asked for the ball's position a certain time after the ball was at its highest point, not after leaving the thrower's hand. So it's not useful to use an interval from the start of the throw here. We must use the interval from the ball's highest point down to its position three seconds later. Here is a picture of this. Again, we are not sure where to draw the ball at the end of the interval, but this is fine for now. We know that a projectile has a velocity of zero meters per second at its maximum height. For the interval shown here, this is the initial velocity since the ball starts here and moves downward. So the ball is in free fall, so it accelerates at negative 9,8 meters per second squared. We have to calculate the ball's position at the end of this interval. We calculate the ball's displacement during this interval. We use this equation, substitute values, and calculate. The answer is minus 44,1 meters. We expected a minus sign because we already knew the ball ends below the highest point. Previously, we calculated that the highest point is 45,92 meters above the hand. So in this question, the ball ends 1,82 meters above the hand. Both of these answers are correct. This shows that the picture we drew was quite accurate for this interval. Well, that covers all the type of questions you need to be able to answer. There is also a lesson about graphs of motion. For more practice, go to the task video and look on the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Thanks for joining us for this lesson. Goodbye.